Hey everyone, long overdue update on this month's West Coaster article that I wrote. This is the cover of the August issue. As August uh, ends here, I finally got around to writing my September article, so that reminded me, hey, I need to shoot a video for the article I wrote for the August issue. So I titled it Miscellaneous Brewing Equipment and Supplies, and the goal with it was to come up with some equipment and supplies that I think a lot of homebrewers should have around other than your standard equipment. You know, be it a, if you're an all grain brewer, extract brewer, partial mash brewer, you know, it's just good stuff to have around while you're brewing. So uh, I came up with a list of some things and, and list why I, I like to have them. And first off is a spray bottle full of sanitizer. Um, I use this all the time. If you don't have a spray bottle with sanitizer, get one. Uh, fill it up with DI or RO water. Don't use tap water because it'll get cloudy and you'll see all that precipitate out. So use uh, use distilled or RO water with your sanitizer and it'll last a long time. And, and I think that's one of the best things I have. And then uh, aluminum foil. I use aluminum foil all the time. I, I put them on top of my starters when I put them on the stir plate. Uh, you don't want to put an airlock on your starter. Well, at least for a regular Saccharomyces you know, starter, because you want gas to uh, transfer back and forth. You want CO2 to leave and you want O2 to, to enter. So you want that gas transfer happening. So aluminum foil is great for that, great for covering up uh, carboys after you've sanitized them, um, a lot of things. You know, and sa same with saran wrap or any plastic wrap. Uh, towels, I, I go through a ton of towels every time I brew. Uh, cleaning up messes, stuff slopping, uh, when I'm cleaning equipment, you know, wiping them down. It's always good to have a big stack of towels on. I, you can always tell when I've homebrewed by the amount of towels I go through. So uh, right now I'm drinking on my uh, Belgian pale ale I brewed up. Uh, this is actually, uh, I never brewed a Belgian pale ale before, so I wanted to uh, give it a try and drinking on that while I'm look, looking at the article here. By the way, you can, of course find all the articles at westcoastersd.com and read them. So those of you that are not in San Diego, you have no excuse not to read my stuff. <laughs> um, dried malt extract. I love having dried malt extract around even though I'm an all grain brewer. One, you can make starters with it. And two, if I come up a little short on gravity, I can always add in some, some dried malt extract to kind of boost the, the gravity up without having to rely on sugar. It's nice to have actual malt to, uh, to do that boost and have the nutrients and, and you know not completely dry out the beer if you don't want that. So having uh, dried malt extract around, you know, and, and sugar as well, just regular sugar, be it corn sugar or cane sugar, you know, it's always great to have that around for uh, boosting ABB or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you need to like dry out a beer. Uh, dry yeast, that's something I need to get a little better at myself. I have a little bit of dry yeast, uh, I have the, the Belle Saison, and I have some wine yeast for mead making, but it, I need to get some USO5. Uh, you never know when you might need some yeast. If you forget to get it at the shop, I mean, that's the biggest thing, or you need to pitch a lot of cells really quick and you don't have time to make a start. It's always good to have dry yeast on hand. So, I mean, and it's really cheap too. I mean, oftentimes you can find it for like a buck a pack. Uh, other things I use a lot on brew day are uh, strainers and, and fine mesh bags. I use fine mesh bags for doing uh, a lot of additions like co my coconut IPA. I use fine mesh bag to add the coconut in, be it in the boil and the keg. Um, I just use some coffee in a fine mesh bag. Uh, hops for dry hopping, say, either in secondary or the keg. I typically dry hop loose in secondary, but maybe if it needs to go in the keg, I'll put it in a fine mesh bag. So those are always good to have on hand. And they're pretty cheap to keep around. Uh, plastic tubing and airlocks, those are once again very cheap items. You never know when you might need a, a scramble for a blow off tube and uh, you run out of tubing or clean tubing. So it's good to have uh, extra tubing around just in case uh, you might come across and it's like, hey, this looks a little too dirty. Uh, maybe I should get rid of it. Uh, you should at least change out your tubing, I'd say, once a year. And uh, I, I need to do so myself when it comes to my kegerator. I need to switch out that tubing. And, uh, you know, airlocks, I've definitely been around forgotten to have airlocks because I tend to throw them out 
uh, and not sanitize them if, if yeast gets up into the to the airlock I'll, I'll just throw it away I won't bother cleaning it these days uh, if I get it you know if, if the airlock if the croissant doesn't get up in there I'll, I'll reuse it until that might happen so uh, yeast nutrients another thing I like to have around to be it using it in starters using it in a, a beer it's just always good to have nutrient just you know why not it's cheap you might as well use it uh, yeah just why not on that and then uh, my other my last item on the list is lactic or phosphoric acid I, I it's hard to find phosphoric acid I don't really know a good source of it but I'm pretty sure I have to order it online I use lactic acid uh, a couple of things you can use it for. If you're using barrels, it's good to kind of, after you clean them, to sort of drop the pH down to kill off some bugs instead of using like a star sand. You can mix it in lactic acid and, and kind of do like an acid wash of your barrels. Uh, most of the time you're going to be using it in your mash or in your uh, sparge water to, to keep the pH low. You don't want your pH to get too high when you're sparging. Uh, the higher the pH goes up, the more tannins you'll extract from your grain, so you don't want that to happen. So it's good to put some lactic acid in your sparge water. Uh, certain mashes, if you're maybe not using a lot of dark malts, uh, and maybe you don't want to use gypsum, it's another uh, option to lowering your, the pH of your mash. So uh, those are the items I came up with. Uh, if you have any others uh, that I've not listed, which I'm sure there's plenty, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to do a part two of this article at some point. Uh, some friends of mine had a cool little gadget where uh, they use a, a little, it's a specific to 20 pound uh, propane tanks and it's a scale. And so they'll weigh their propane tanks before they use them and, and have an idea of you know, how much they're going to use in a batch and whether they should fire this propane tank up for a boil or maybe use it to preheat stuff. So that, that was another example, didn't make the cut. Um, there was a few others I came up with, I can't remember at this time. But uh, yeah, let me know what your ideas are and with items and supplies you think it's good to have on hand. So yes, August issue of West Coaster. Uh, I will, as soon as the uh, next issue is up, hopefully get a, uh, a video up in a more timely fashion, but I'll give you a hint, it's on IPA tips. And I had some great local home brewers give me some of their tips and on and procedures and methods on how they brew great hoppy beer and uh, the hoppy beer I've had from these home brewers is among the best in the country that I've had and that includes professional brewers so sneak peek of what's coming up next issue thanks for watching until next time cheers